Hey, what's happening YouTube? This is Hayes Anderson and I'm going to talk about pocket operators today. I like to use the PO12 over here as a clapper board to synchronize my audio and video. Over here next to my mixer I will usually keep it. Here is the office in its place and what I can do is I can hold this up to a camera and play a pattern and I can get a nice audio track as well as a video visualization so that I can line things up later in my movie producing software. But herein lies the problem. I've dropped my pocket operator PO12 a number of times from this location just accidentally tripping on my big clumsy foot right here across a wire. And the last time I did that it took a really bad tumble and I thought that it was broken for good. It's already has a couple other problems but it's chugging along just fine. Speaking of which, have you checked the prices on the PO12s lately? It's getting kind of ridiculous. I really do hope that Teenage Engineering is going to release some new, possibly PO12s and PO14 subs, because I think that they could use an overhaul. Much like the uh, Mega Man here is an upgrade to the robot, it has a lot more features that really make it pretty cool. So, what I want to do is I want to put my PO12 into this blank case that I have. Now, big caveat, I don't really recommend these pocket operator cases. The only reason why I don't is because they are expensive. And because the pocket operators are kind of cheap, 50 bucks, and the cases are like $25, it almost makes more sense to just buy another pocket operator at that price. Having said that, now that the price is way up out of the roof and these things are getting really scarce and hard to find, well, maybe it's probably better to go for a more secure solution. You're still not going to protect the pocket operator 100% even when it's in a case. These things still suffer what is called lifted pads because this is all SMD construction and particularly the mechanical connection of the audio jacks to the back of the PCB is not very good. One of the things that we like to do is use adapters. I do not recommend this with the pocket operators. What I recommend instead is to make sure that you just have a dedicated eighth inch cable that goes to quarter inch if necessary because what ends up happening is you put too much leverage on these jacks and you will get lifted pads. Something I wanted to use in the past that I thought would be really nice are these barrel connectors. Again, these are pretty bad. Same reason for guitar pedals and why we don't want to use them for guitar pedals, especially with uh, these pocket operators. I'm pretty sure this is why I got a lifted pad on my PO14 sub, which we should probably talk about now. Switching to the microscope, we see my PO14 sub, and we're looking at the back audio output jack. This is a stereo jack, and the lug configuration is as follows. These two lugs are ground. This one is the right output, and this one is the left output. That leaves these two lugs. These are the switch connectors. So this one is the switch for the right, and this is the switch for the left. So if you don't really know what, what that means, don't worry about it. What is important though is we want to try to follow these traces. So one thing I do know is that with this left one, this left lug, this left lug is actually connected to this trace. And if you can see this trace very carefully, we have two traces right here. One and two. So even though you see four lines, what we're looking for is in the middle of these lines. And I believe that this trace runs under the jack and goes to this lug, which is the right lug. Now this lug is lifted. There is a pad on the PCB, kind of like these pads right here, these gold pads. And imagine if this pad has just been removed. Now there's no longer a connection to the copper trace, which runs to its connection, wherever that is. But what I can do, theoretically, hypothetically, is I can run a wire, and I would run it flush along here to be like really, really tight, and then down and across. And then I would grind away the surface area to expose the copper trace, but not grind too far down because that would totally just destroy the trace. And then solder that wire to here, and this would now make another connection. I have a couple of different ways that I can remove this tab. I was going to use two needle nose pliers. The idea was to use this one with the heat shrink around the jaws to hold on to the base to prevent it from being scratched. But the problem is where am I actually going to clamp on to? There's really no good place. These jacks are in the way. I suppose maybe I could anchor by the jacks, but still, no, that's not going to be good. So I think really what I need to do is just pinch with my fingers at the base and then with this really good beefy pair here. And I don't care about scratching this plate 
just carefully start to rock this back and forth. Like that. I'm going to try the other side with my other hand. Piece of cake. Now for this, it would be nice to sand these down, but remember, this is fiberglass. You don't want to breathe that stuff. I think we're good to go. And that should do it. Now hopefully my pocket operator PO12 will be more protected in case I drop it again. This will do it for the video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.